Okay, welcome for kind of feels like part two. My name's Jill and I'm one of the teachers with True North Insight and really jazzed about this topic tonight, which I, I, I really enjoy and it gives a lot of uh, really supports my practice. And so I'm excited to share this aspect with you. It's kind of part two to uh, another one that um, I'll probably share the link to it below this recording in case you're looking for it. And, and it's on um, aiming and applying our attention uh, with a practice called Vitaka. And so this is kind of a companion that the called Vichara, which is V-I-C-A-R-A. -A, and there's a long accent over the first A. The C in Pali words is always pronounced C-H, so it's Vichara, even though it looks like Vakara, but it's Vichara. Um, and <clears throat> these two, Vitaka and Vichara, are mm, often referenced in what are called the jhanas or concentration practices. They're just the two beginning, um, mm, they're not, they're, it's not the state, it's, um, oh, there's another word I'm looking for, factor. Um, so th these are two of the beginning factors that, support us in concentration states. But that's not what we're talking about tonight. I'm not teaching concentration, jhana practices. And um, there's links down below to the books and the teacher that I recommend and that I'm currently studying with, Shyla Catherine, on um, concentration states, which are important and Wonderful. <laughs> that being said, Vitaka and Vichara are also applied, used, essential in Vipassana practice, which is what we're doing tonight. Vipassana insight meditation. And we also use both of these in our daily life, which is something we were talking about in the Zoom about how we apply these in our daily life with mindfulness of eating, or walking, or conversation, etc. Driving, certainly, I hope. Um, yeah. So they have different applications depending on the intention. So the first one, Vitaka, is where we aim and apply our attention, where we decide we're going to pay attention to, and we we direct our attention. Um, it's like uh, we, one of the things that we described it as, not, not we, but in the teachings, is like um, striking a bell. And so you have the striker and you, you know, if you don't aim, you're just going to miss the bell and you won't get the resounding purpose of hitting the bell. So you aim and apply, you have to also hit it. Just aiming doesn't do much. So you have to aim and apply to receive uh, the outcome. And then this second aspect, vichara, is likened to the resounding of the bell. So we um, aim and apply and then sustain the sound. You can hear the resounding continues. It has an echo, a vibration that um, sustains. So this is one of the images that's used to help us uh, understand these two different aspects. One is aiming, applying, and the other is sustaining the attention with that resounding sound. There's a couple other similes uh, or images that 
I find super helpful and I actually use them in my practice to, um, uh, so I think we also talked last week about, I don't know if I did actually, but the first one, Vitaka, is like a bird spreading its wings and, and it has to apply the pressure to lift off, to start flying, right? So it, it, it spreads its wings and then it, it pushes down, applies the pressure to lift off and then to continue soaring, flying, the, uh, that needs to be sustained. The wings need to continue that pressure, that relationship with the air to sustain the flying, right? So the other image that I really like and I use in my practice is, um, Throw, I think they call it throwing um, pottery on the wheel. Um, I'm not a potter, but um, I still find the image really helpful. So the vit vitaka part would be like taking the lump of clay and throwing it into the, like placing it in the center of a potter's wheel that spins. And then the vachara is when the hands stay on that piece of pottery as the wheel is spinning to, you know, they maintain, they sustain the contact with the, that to start shaping it and molding it and creating with it. So it's applying and sustaining the attention. It's just, I can, it's just such a beautiful image Particularly, I find it helpful. I'm using it when applying it to the breath, to mindfulness of breath. But of course, it could be with, with anything and whatever the object of our attention. How do we sustain the attention there? So say if it's mindfulness of eating, we begin with that intention to apply. I'm going to be mindful with this meal or with this bite, probably, you know, just one bite at a time. And you're making, you know, all the sense doors are connecting with whatever utensil you're using, picking up that food, smelling, tasting, and then you put the utensil down and you sustain the attention and continue tasting and hearing, texture, all of those senses feel the body responding to it and sustain the attention all the way through. And then you begin again, apply to the next bite. Um, so I'm gonna give you two more similes here. So do you find what resonates for you? What, what brings it alive? And maybe you'll, you'll um, find your own, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, I'd love to hear some other examples. Uh, another one is um, drawing a circle that we have to apply the, I'll say pen to the paper. So there's aiming, directing, aiming and applying, and then sustaining, sustaining the attention as to create that circle. <clears throat> this is a, a very helpful, I um, sometimes do this with beginning students and draw, maybe I'll do it, yes I will, um, if I can, I don't know if it'll show, let's see, let's find out, I don't know if it'll show, let's try, so here is, um, maybe I should use a clipboard, no, it's too much fussing. <laughs> Talking to myself. I am going to turn on the light, though. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> so here we go. We'll see if it shows or not. So this is, uh, we're talking about drawing a circle. So 
I'm applying the pen to the paper and then I'm going to sustain the attention. We'll say this is my breath. Exhaling, inhaling, staying with a breath. Oh, I wonder if this is making any sense to people. Oh, yeah. Draw, staying with the breath. I wonder if this even shows up. Hmm, maybe I should have just stayed to my original thoughts. Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Breathing, breathing, you know. So you can see that, maybe you can see, I don't know if it shows, but um, how you can even watch the mind flowing away <laughs> off of the object. If you, you know, what, the closer you attune, you can start to see just as the thoughts start to carry you away, ah, begin again. So this is a, one of the, another simile that can be helpful, drawing a circle. The last one is um, um, a bee to a flower. A bee um, coming to gather the pollen from a flower. And so there's aiming and directing the vitaka and then the vichara of like getting all up in it and buzzing around and making the contact and sustaining the contact of the vichara. Yeah. So you can imagine there's lots of different ways. Well, I said that was the last one, but I'm going to mention one more now because it just came back into my mind. This was on a three month retreat. This one came to me and it was so helpful, so helpful for me. So maybe it will be for someone else. So, it's an old school reference showing my age on this one. So back in the day, uh, when, when we would apply wallpaper to a wall, you used to like have to mix up wallpaper paste and have this big wide brush to apply the paste onto the back of the paper, huge hassle, huge mess, before it could go on the wall. So for me, that big wide brush was like the vitaka. I'd be like brushing the breath in my mind as I'm breathing, I'm like trying to uh, apply my attention to the whole length of the breath. Because as you know, when you've paid any attention to the breath, it's a whole series of sensations. It's not just like breathing in, breathing out. It's like breathing in, the breath, inhale ends, it becomes the exhale. Exhale is a whole length to it and an ending. There's a little space and then another beginning. There's, it's a whole process, one breath. And so I would use this brush to apply my attention through the whole breath. And then vachara is when the paper would just stay on the breath, like the attention just would stay on the breath. You don't have to work so hard to apply it. At first, there's that intention to apply, to pay attention here, begin again here, pay attention here, begin again here. And then at some point it just stays. And it just stays and is sustained with the breath. It's very sweet. Okay, what else? I think that's all. So for our practice, so you can hear how mm, this can be helpful just in our daily life. And, and uh, the group here on Zoom was sharing some of the ways this is showing up for us. and bringing energy um, and bringing some peace actually of what we're paying attention to. Um, 
And now we can take it a little deeper and actually develop a lot of calm and focus and um, beginning stages, beginning concentration. Um, Vitaka, the first aspect, counters the hindrances of sloth and torpor and dullness because it takes energy to pay attention. It's like, mm, begin again, honey, start here, pay attention, what's happening here? This um, brings energy and helps counter sloth and torpor. The second aspect, vichara, counters the hindrance of doubt. The, the doubt, you know, that we often have of like, I can't do this. My mind is so busy. My mind is so restless. I'm, I'm too whatever. You know, there's a, we always have these ideas of ourselves and what we can and can't do. And when we practice it with this, we learn that, oh, I can pay attention and maintain attention. And I know when I'm beginning again and maintaining, sustaining that curiosity and that contact. Yes, let's practice. I'm gonna turn off this overhead again because it's like hospital in here, it's so bright. So get yourself comfy. Adjust your posture. These are pos uh, practices of awakening. So if you're needing to practice laying down because you're having pain or um, if you're experiencing fatigue, you might want to practice standing up or sitting away from the back of your chair the way I am uh, so that you're not too cozy, uh, especially if it's later in the evening in your time zone. <clears throat> if you are laying down, you might like to raise up your forearm so that that will drop when you're falling asleep and you can begin again. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So finding what posture is going to support this, these practices of awakening. You might like to turn away from the computer or dim your lights as I did. See if your body needs any other movements to release tension or get comfortable so that you can become still. Stillness is a great support for these practices. What posture or position for your eyes is helpful for your practice tonight? Is it helpful for you to have your eyes slightly open so you're bringing in a bit of light, especially if you're sleepy? Or is it more calming for you to close your eyes? And then uh, please don't hurry on to one of these practices. You really want to take your time first, just settling the body. So we just begin finding our restful place for the eyes, whether it's open, slightly open or closed. And just check into the muscles of your face. Is there any tension here that isn't needed right now? Perhaps smoothing or widening the forehead or allowing the jawbone to feel heavy. Mm. 
letting go of external expression, not needing to please anybody else or uh, be in relation with others in that way and just letting a face relax. Does the face relaxes, lengthening the sides and back of the neck so the shoulder bones drop down? The weight of the shoulders sliding down through elbows into relaxed hands. And then checking into the torso, if there's any tension here that isn't needed, I find it helpful to soften the inner layers of the belly and heart. So that as the upper body relaxes, we may begin to experience more weightedness through the pelvis, legs and feet, or if you're laying down with the back body, connecting with ground. And I'll be quiet for a few moments here and just stay with this relaxing, grounding and wakefulness uprightness. can actually be helpful to just let the mind relax and kind of flit around in the beginning. Try not to just pull your mind onto its anchor. Give it, give the body and your energy time to arrive. A few minutes of just letting the mind drift around in its habits can be helpful because you may soon notice that that gets very boring. Have it mind. And then that will give you energy to really want to apply and direct attention, which we'll do in a few minutes. So just relax and arrive. And now see what anchor will be helpful for your practice tonight. I'm mostly going to describe practicing with the breath as our anchor, but you could, if it's better for your nervous system to attend to an anchor such as the sensation of your hands or to hearing, um, those would be fine as well. Sometimes attending to the breath can create more tension for people or can um, just feel a little bit too, too close, too tight. So choose, choose with compassion and kindness what anchor will help you tonight.
And so I'm going to describe being with the breath. If you're using breath as your anchor, you're choosing one place where you're feeling the breath. It's not the whole breath coming into the body and all the mechanisms of breathing and the breath moving out. Choosing one place to feel the breath. It may be your belly. Expanding and contracting. Or it may be the center of the chest rising and falling. Or lastly, it may be the passage of air at the nostrils. So choose whichever feels most accessible for you tonight. And so now we begin with Vataka, aiming and directing our attention to your chosen anchor. Like the striker hitting the bell. or the wings of the bird first pressing down to lift off into flight, aiming and directing attention. And we're just gonna do just this part for a little while. So your attention will probably move away to other thoughts, sensations, distractions, sounds. And then you begin again. When we notice the attention has moved away, we don't add any judgment or harshness. We simply aim and direct, begin again. Oh, now we'll begin to explore this second aspect of vichara, where the bird's wings continue to apply contact, sustain the pressure with the air, where you continue to make contact with your anchor, we'll say the breath, through its whole length, inhale and exhale, over and over.
or like the potter's hands on the clay on the wheel, maintaining contact with the breath. And you continue applying curiosity and attention with the whole experience, like the brush. Or the wings. And after some time, applying you might feel this sustaining quality that the awareness just rests with it, like a feather on a wave. It just stays. The attention has a lightness and brightness to it, no, not strain or harshness. It doesn't take a lot of effort, it just takes curiosity and intention. Beginning again.
What image is helpful for you? The bee to the pollen, drawing a circle. A bird in flight. Potter's wheel. And now for these next three minutes, see if you can really sustain your attention on your anchor without straining. And in a moment, I'll ring the bell three times. Continue directing and sustaining your attention with this sound until the third sound ends. 
and then ending your practice. Thank you for joining us in this uh, practice. If you've practiced with us in, on the YouTube channel, uh, please check the links down below and I'll share Shyla Catherine's sites and um, her books um, that are particular to um, developing these and many other factors in a lot more depth. And um, I think there was something else I was going to share, but oh yeah, and I'll share the link to the Vitaka recording. Yeah, I remembered. All right, thanks for joining us.